Hey, welcome back to Smoky Ribs. Today, I've got a 13 pound full packer brisket going into the pit barrel cooker. That's right, we're gonna hang a brisket today. Let's get busy. If you wanna cook backyard barbecue till you get your feel, you come to the right place, rest your own Smoky Ribs. Smoky Ribs. All right, I've got a 13 pound brisket here. This is a full packer brisket. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and trim off some of this excess fat, some of this hard fat and the cap that's not going to render down. Now, as you can see, there are big chunks of fat all over this brisket here on the top. And that's what you wanna get rid of is the really thick pieces. Like I said, leave about a quarter of an inch. All right, now this right here is a cap, fat cap. We're going to cut into this, see how deep it runs. As you can see, it's running pretty deep. You want to get all this out of there. I think we're about to hit bottom there. There we go. All this was just solid fat. There's still a little bit of hard fat left right here. See if I can remove that. All right, for the most part, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to leave that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this entire side right here. I'm just going to go down through here, make a good straight cut. Just like that. We got about a quarter inch of fat in places thinner in other places. I think we're good. Now this is the flat of this brisket. And as you can see, the grain is running like this. Now this is very hard to tell sometimes after it's cooked. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to cut right here on the end across this. Grain's running this way. I want to cut this way. And after this is cooked, I'm going to know exactly where to start trimming this. Just like that. We're going to make our cuts just like this all the way up this flat. Now on the point, it's a little bit different story. Once I get into here, as you can see, the grain is running straight across. Can you see that? It's running straight across. And it's going to stop somewhere right in here. So when I get to this part, I'm going to slice it in half just like this and then I'll, I'll be cutting across the grain. All right, this is still a little damp from where I was rinsing it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and towel dry this off a little bit better. We're gonna go ahead and put our rub on here. We want this rub to sit on this. Two hours would be good. I'll probably go around one hour. All right, so I'm gonna take some olive oil. This is extra virgin olive oil. Just gonna drizzle some across the top here, rub it in. This is going to be an adhesive for our rub. All right, now the rub that I'm using is this pit barrel cooker. They make this. It's an all-purpose pit rub. I haven't used this one yet. I have used the uh, wild game, beef and wild game. Excellent. It was really good on ribs. I smell of this, and I can tell that it's going to go with beef really well. So we're going to give it a shot. Going to put a liberal coating on both sides of this. Oh yeah, man, that, that rub smells excellent. All right, I'm gonna flip this over. We're gonna give it another dose of olive oil. I'm gonna season the backside. All right, I've got this side rubbed down. I'm gonna flip it back over one more time. And this is going to be for hook placement. Now, you want to hang your meat on the uh, point end. This is the thickest part of the brisket. So I'm going to gauge it around. Let's see. About right here we're going to go in with this. Okay, that should hang on the rebar. Plenty good. Alright, now take you another hook. Pull it tight. Go in like this. 
let it come through the bottom like we have here. All right, now I'm taking an extra measure here. I'm going in with three of these. Once again, hook it in. It's more of a chain effect. We're going to push in here. It's going to come through the back side. There we go. That'll hang all day long. All right, I'll see you at the pit barrel cooker in about one hour. All right, I've got the pit barrel cooker right here. Down here, I've got the firebox. I'm going to go ahead and use the Kingsford blue and white original charcoal. We're just going to level this basket off. Now, this is going to be a long cook, so you do want to make sure that you got this completely filled up. And I'm actually lacking a few. And I think what I'm gonna do is I, I'm gonna light around 10 to 15 charcoal pieces in here, and I'm gonna add them to this. And that'll give that a good slow start. And uh, this thing will not get out of control right off the bat. It'll just come up slowly, and that's what I'm wanting. All right. That should be plenty. I'm going to go ahead and light this up. I'll bring you back. While I'm letting this charcoal heat up, I want to tell you about an app. It's called Periscope. It's available for the iPhone and Android. And it's a really cool app. It's a live feed as you're doing things. And I'm going to start incorporating that. Every time I do a video, just like I'm doing here, I'm going to be shooting some live feed throughout the day of various parts. I just did one, matter of fact of uh, the charcoal basket here and, and lighting the uh, chimney. So go ahead and download this for your, your smartphone and subscribe to Smoky Ribs on there. It's really going to be a lot of fun. You'll be able to see me doing the live feeds throughout the day. This will be uh, live, so it'll be days before the actual YouTube video goes up onto my channel. Check it out. All right, so I am above flush right here. And uh, that's a little bit more than what I intended, but that's fine. This is going to get this started, and it's going to start slowly, and that's what I'm wanting. I'm going to go ahead and place these into the pit barrel cooker, just like this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and place my rebar in here. This is very critical for proper ventilation. We don't want this thing to start getting too hot too fast. So put the lid on. We're gonna let this go for around 20 minutes, get some more of that charcoal lit, start building our heat up, and I'll be back. All right, I've been going around 15, 20 minutes, somewhere in that neighborhood. What I've got here is three chunks of hickory wood. That's about all the smoke I wanna put on this brisket. Hickory's a little on the strong side. You gotta be careful how you use it. Three chunks should do that good. It's a, it's a large piece of meat. All right, so let's go ahead and hook this bad boy. I'm utilizing the second hook on this until we get some shrinkage on this brisket, and then I'll hook it back into the top one. All right, now quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and put my probe into the thickest part of this point, which is right in here. And I'm looking for 160 degrees. At 160 degrees, we're gonna do something different. All right. On my eye grill thermometer, I'm showing 160 degrees. Let's give it a few checks here. Oh yeah. I'm at 156 towards the bottom. I'm about 162, 163 at the top. We're getting ready to pull this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this lid, get it out of the way. Remove the probe. And out with the brisket. All right, I'm going to take this brisket. We're going to lay it over here on some foil. Just like that. Normally I would not even worry about foiling a brisket, but this is a uh, select. It's not a choice and it definitely didn't prime. So instead of taking a risk on drying this out and not having it juicy on the inside, I'm gonna go ahead and do a foil on this 
and uh, that's going to pretty much ensure that we're good to go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and remove my uh, rebar from this. I'm going to go ahead and put the grate in position. Now that is pretty much taking up all the area, as you can see. All right, so I'm gonna insert my thermometer back into this brisket. I'm shooting for a 200 degree internal temp. I'm also gonna keep monitoring my uh, grate temp with this other probe here. All right, I've got my other probe to monitor the grate temp. We're good here. Now let's go back in with the rebar. going to put our lid on this real quick so like I said we're going to monitor this and once I hit around 200 degrees internal temp we're going to be pulling this bad boy off and I'll show you what we're doing next all right let's take a look and see what we're reading with my instant read thermometer my eye grill is showing right at 200 degrees I'm like at 199 it's bouncing back and forth Let's see what we got here. 191, 194, 198, that's 206, that's in that flat, that's 208, and that is in to the point there. It's 210. All right, I think overall we're ready to uh, remove this. All right, once again, I'm using my wife's trunk as a table. She's gonna kill me. All right, I got a towel, just a plain old bath towel here. We're just gonna wrap this up for extra insulation. All right, now from here, we're going into an ice chest. I'm back in the position I started in where all the juices are coupled up. All right, let's, let's close that up. We're gonna let this rest for a solid hour. I've been resting this brisket about an hour and 10 minutes. We're gonna remove it from this ice chest. Man, the smell, the heat, everything is just pouring out of this thing. Let me see if I can reach in here, grab this. Gonna get rid of this ice chest. All right, let's unwrap this brisket and see what we got. Now this is an hour and 10 minutes after the fact. All right, now I want to point out something. If you notice, right before I pulled this, I was getting different temperatures in different areas depending on how thick and whatnot. That is the importance of leaving this wrap, wrapping it in a towel, putting it into an ice chest to give this time for all this heat to distribute evenly throughout the entire brisket. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the flat from the point and that area is around right here. Just gonna cut this in half. Look at that, look at the juice, look at the smoke ring. That is beautiful. All right, I'm gonna start with the, um, the flat here and we're gonna start carving this into slices. All right, now if you remember earlier in the video, I took and cut a slice off as a reference to which way the, the grain is running. The grain is running this way. This way is cutting across. All right, let's see what we got here. Mm, 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 mm. Just take a piece. Can you see the moisture in this? Look, just take a look. Look at the juiciness. Nice little smoke ring. This is awesome. That pit barrel cooker did a fantastic job. And like I said earlier, if I would have had a better grade of uh, brisket, I probably wouldn't even wrapped it. But there's not a thing in the world wrong with wrapping, in my opinion. Some people are just so stuck on certain things. And the way I look at it, as long as it turns out good, tastes good, it don't matter what technique you use, really. All right, let's check it for tenderness. That's the big one right here. Let's do the pull test. Pulling right apart, look at that. Oh yeah. 
Mm, mm, mm. All right, what I've decided to do with this brisket, tonight anyway, is go ahead and make some brisket sandwiches. We're gonna layer this. This is just a hoagie bun. Brisket's still nice and warm. All right, now on top of this, I'm going to my all-time go-to barbecue sauce. This is the You Know You Want It Barbecue Sauce Spicy by Manuel Rios. I, I've yet to find any sauce that I like better than this. I've got a room slap full of different sauces. I'm, I'm telling you, this takes them all. If you're interested in trying this sauce, I'll have a link in the description box where you can go over there to uh, Manuel Rios' Facebook page. You can order it straight through there using PayPal. You will not find this in a grocery store. You have got to order it through him. All right, we're going to stop with that right there. All right, now on top of that, I've got some Clawson kosher dill pickles. I was, it was a toss-up with me if I wanted to grill some jalapenos, which would have been excellent, or dill pickles. I went with the dill pickle. One more ingredient. We're going with a battered onion ring. Oh, yeah. All right, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to try it out. Let's see how we did. I tell you what, this has got some unreal flavors. That brisket turned out perfect. I wanted to go ahead and do a brisket video because most people are intimidated by doing brisket on even a Kamado style cooker. I wanted to show you just how easy it is to do a brisket on a pit barrel cooker. It's a absolutely fantastic rib machine. I've already did a pork butt with it. Now I did a whole packer brisket, easy, turned out perfect, juicy, full of flavor, just the right amount of smoke. And this sandwich is killer. The You Know You Want It barbecue sauce by Manuel Rios, get you some. It complements this brisket so well. Until next time, smoke your ribs.